On the third day of experiment two, the children read chapter six of their sex education text. Then there was a discussion about sexual transmission of disease. So here this is the methodology I'm talking about. And so because we have this list, the third day of the experiment two, and we have these numbers here, so this is a number, and it's in this serial list. So here we're going to capitalize experiment. The children read the chapter, read chapter six of their sex education text. So the E, experiment, capitalize. As can be seen in table nine and figure two, clients who were misinformed about sex as children were also more likely to believe in sexual myths as adults. So here we have again the same case. We have a series, but we have the number that's coming in here. So table is capitalized and figure is capitalized. The control groups were counterbalanced across both condition A and condition B. Control groups here has no reason to be capitalized. It is a name, but it's a very standard name. It's not like we gave it a special name like a factor. So we do not capitalize that. However, the condition of the experiment, there's an A and a B, these do get capitalized because it's the name of the experimental condition. The no therapy is capitalized under this idea that it's the name of a control group, a control condition. But remember the rule we had was it has to be the condition and then followed by the name and it's part of a series like condition A, condition B, condition C. Then they get those kinds of capitalization because they're naming those in a series. But in this case it's not. It's just, we're just talking about one and it doesn't come in a series and also this is not a condition with a name after it, rather it's no therapy control condition. So we do not capitalize it because it doesn't meet any of those conditions we just talked about. Sarcastic sentences were remembered better than non-sarcastic sentences. However, there was no sarcasm, X, sex, X, self-esteem, interaction effect. So here we're using the X to be by sarcasm, by sex, by self-esteem. And so we're looking for this interaction effect. Capitalize the X here, but you don't need to capitalize the X. So the X, the by, we call that by, right? We would say by. That is not capitalized. But the sex, sarcasm, and self-esteem is capitalized because, as we said, you do capitalize when you're putting the, the names into the formulas like this. An analysis of variance showed that the between subjects factor was significant. The between subjects factor. Now we said that when you have a factor name, you go ahead and capitalize it. But this actually is not that because we don't have, first of all, we don't have multiple names to compare. And this is not the name of a factor. This is a between subjects. It's a different thing. It's measuring that effect that happens between subjects as compared to across subjects, within subjects, between subjects. That's a normal statistical approach. That's not the name of a factor that we derive from factor analysis. So, Confusing, right? According to Pavlov, 1927, the CS should be delivered about one second before the US. So here the CS means the condition and the US means the unconditioned stimulus. Conditioned stimulus, unconditioned stimulus. This is not explained using the parentheses, right? We're not saying condition stimulus CS. We're not going to do that. Why? Because this is common and understood in the field, so you do not need to do that. It's in the dictionary. According to Sternberg, 1985, current measures of IQ do not reflect the triadic nature of human intelligence. Again, so IQ, intelligent quote, intelligence quotient, quotient, this is, not, uh, this is not 
explained using the parentheses IQ because it's common, it's in the dictionary. When the E delivered the CS, the pigeon pecked the key and avoided being drenched in cold water. So E here meaning experimenter, and we are, we are not going to abbreviate experimenter. Even though it's commonly used, experimenter we use all the time, but we do not use E for experimenter. So here we write the whole word out. And here, when the experimenter delivered the conditioned stimulus, we have the CS inside the parentheses as we're explaining it for the first time. Now we just previously said that it was okay to write it without the explanation. And again, it comes down to is it common in your area or is it not common? And does your journal want you to write it out or not write it out? So in this case, we've gone ahead and I've got an example where we've written it out. It took the respondents 20 seconds to two minutes to recall the stimulus word. After a three hour delay, respondents began the trials again. So in this case, we can go ahead and abbreviate the S for seconds because that's often used in experiments and the hours can be HR. The MMPI was administered to respondents of different handedness 26 LH and RH. Now I'm going to guess that LH means left hand and RH means right hand. And we also have this MMPI. So if we did not have this MMPI earlier in the paper, if this is the first time, then we need to write MMPI out and then write the abbreviation here. And then for right-handed and left-handed, we write out the whole word and because it's a compound word and we're having one group is left-handed, one group is right-handed, we can go ahead and use the hyphen. In fact, if you check the dictionary, this is an acceptable usage for that the right-handed and the left-handed. Again, really tedious, but that's the way it's got to be. It's especially important to be aware in your thesis, in your paper, when's the first time, the very first time that you wrote this abbreviation. And when you're writing your paper, it's very common that we write pieces and we move things around. So watch out that you don't move something forward and you have an abbreviation and you need to remember if this is the first time then I need to now write that out and I need to cut out if I moved it later and just use the abbreviation for something to pay attention to. Three kinds of odor tests were presented to college students. Odor recognition, odor discrimination, and odor matching. Tests were administered in either the ODOROM or OMOROD sequences or sequence. Okay, so if we look at the problem here, we have this odor discrimination, odor recognition. So what we can do is we can go ahead and put the odor recognition into an abbreviation if this is the first time. If this is not the first time, then here, odor recognition, we should not be using the whole word. We should be using OR, right? If this is the first time, then we need to write it out and then give it an abbreviation. And then after that, we can just use the abbreviation as we did there. So the problem here is, this is confusing. They've, this, per, this person, this example has written the whole word, but then here uses the abbreviation. How strange. You have to introduce the abbreviation at least once, and then you can use the abbreviation. Low doses of LSD seem to have no effect on the ESP of pygmy ch chimpanzees. LSD and ESP you can find in the dictionary. They're common abbreviations. Therefore, we do not need to. Pounds of weight loss was recorded as the dependent variable and hours spent with the phobic object was the independent variable. And here we have this problem that I love to point out, this is really a biggie, is the beginning of a sentence. At the beginning of a sentence, do not use abbreviation. So let me repeat this. 
at the beginning of a sentence. Do not use abbreviation. No, never. It is totally wrong. People love to do it. It's easy to do, especially when you're editing, you move things around. Do not do it. So here we're going to spell out the word pounds. And not okay, that's all for our exercises, our examples there. So again, a lot of technical detail. Practice makes perfect and checking the journal for examples is another great way to learn. Thank you.